Hello, welcome back to the Bridgeport Diaries. If you've not seen it already, I've done a video about a CNC conversion on an old Bridgeport BRJ mill, and I've had quite a few questions from that, a surprising number actually. So I thought I'd do a video about manual operation because quite a few people have asked, can you still use it manually? And in particular, how do you do the, the quill, the, the Z-axis manually? So I'll go through the, the whole thing. For the X-axis, I can absolutely do a manual operation. I've still got the little wheel on the end here that is marked off in, in thou on this machine, so it's no problem at all. If I'm doing a lot of manual operation, what I would probably do is on the other side, round here, I would just slip the belt off there because when you turn the handle, there's a bit of back feed from the um, stepper motors uh, and you can feel the resistance there. And, and it means that you can't really turn the handle particularly quickly because uh, it's spinning the motors quite fast. In fact, if you watch the control unit, when I turn the handle, it, you can see those those LEDs lighting up because I'm, I'm driving the motor as a, as a dynamo and it's, it's probably not good for it. On the Y axis at the front, um, the way that I've put this on means that I haven't got the graduations on the dial. So if I wanted to be super accurate, I would have to pop this back on. I'd probably just take the nut off, the handle off, the taper lock pulley off, the belt off, fit that back on, then the handle and then the bolts. Prob probably an hour to get it to get it right with the keyway. It's a bit fiddly perhaps, but um, that, that's the best way to get uh, full manual operation if you want to be accurate about it on the Y-axis. Lifting the knee hasn't changed at all. I've got the graduations there and, I, and that still works just like it did. I haven't touched that at all. And finally, if I want to drive the quill, can I do this manually? Yeah, absolutely. I can just pull on that and that brings the quill down. That's quite easy to do. If I'm doing a drill press type operation, I suppose I could fit this back onto there and that, and that would give me um, a bit more leverage, but I just don't need it. And, and what you find is, if you're doing any kind of CNC operation, this, this starts firing up and down and you'll end up poking yourself in the eye with it. Uh, don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> and the other way to drive the, the, the quill is down with this uh, little wheezy wheel. I think somebody was asking, can you still fit the, the, the wheel to it? So yes, you can still fit the wheel. And again, by turning the wheel, you can definitely drive the, the z-axis a couple of things to be wary of though if you've got the cnc in operation the stepper motor at the back is applying a holding torque to this so it's trying to stop it from turning so if i'm doing this and the cnc is engaged um, i'm fighting against the motor so again i just slip that belt off there hang it on a nail at the back and there's no problem if i want to use the uh, automatic feed here, I can use the automatic feed, not a problem. I've still got access to the three speeds. That still works absolutely the same way that it did before. I tend not to use it because it only works down and using CNC, I can have a power feed down and up. So there's there's no problem with, with doing either of those. The last thing to, to be a little bit wary of is that inside of here, in there, there is a, a torsion spring and that spring uh, just sort of helps stop the weight of this assembly just pulling it straight down um, and under its own weight it just stops it falling down slowly i've taken that out to uh, keep that weight on all the time to keep a bit of tension in this belt to take out uh, you know any backlash in this uh, Z mechanism. So what, what you might find is if you slipped the belt off and this is a fair way down, under its own weight it will slowly descend if you haven't got that flicked across there. Um, but it's never it's never really been a problem and it would be easy to refit the spring. I've still got all of the bits. So yes, you can do it manually. Yes, you've still got the power feed. Yes, you've got the whizzy wheel. Um, but Really, I tend not to use it because the CNC works quite well. Uh, apologies for the uh, NAF focus on this. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's been informative and uh, thanks for watching.